Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Today, I am going to be sharing my review of Pirate Borg from Limithon and Free League Publishing. This is written and illustrated by Luke Stratton, and this 167-page digest-sized hardcover is arriving in stores on September 19th, carrying an MSRP of $39.99. Now, if you order from Free League Publishing, that will include the PDF, and you will get the PDF immediately upon placing your order. Now, strangely enough, this PDF has been on Drive-Thru RPG. As of this recording, it's not. I don't know why. Normally, it carries an MSRP of $19.99 on Drive-Thru RPG. And that's how I got my PDF review copy from Free League Publishing. So I'm taking a guess this will be back on Drive-Thru RPG at some point in the near future. Also, stay tuned because I'll be giving away a copy of the hardcover of Pirate Borg to a lucky viewer. I'm gonna tell you how you can get into the running. Don't miss out. All right, let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Pirate Borg. A few things I wanna mention before we jump on in. First of all, the fine folks over at Free League Publishing were kind enough to provide me with this review copy but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this review with you. These days, it's important that you know that. We're also not gonna look at each and every page inside this book, but I do wanna give you a good feel for what you'll find in Pirate Borg and share my thoughts about it too. Lastly, there is an adventure in this book. So if you are a player, hoping that your game master is going to pick up Pirate Borg, or maybe they already have, and they just haven't run it yet, be forewarned, there might be some spoilers. Now, I'm going to stay spoiler-free as far as the adventure goes, but we are going to be paging through. You may see some things that uh, ruin some surprises, so you have been warned. All right, so let's take a look at the back. There is a darkness upon the sea. These tranquil islands betray the horrors that have unfolded in the dark Caribbean. And a constant state of war has spawned a new breed of outlaw, the pirates. But fouler things than men plague these waters. Hordes of undead, ships of bone and flesh, nameless terrors lurking in the deep. But not the devil himself can save a man from his own greed. All right, let's dive on in. So I do want to mention that not only is this a core set of a rather rules light pirate horror fantasy role-playing game, it's also a toolbox for building adventures, building interesting NPCs, just a lot of random tables included in here, which will give this kind of an old school feel. Now, granted, this is built on Mirkberg, or I guess I will refer to it as most people do, Morkborg. But in my opinion, this is far more than just a Morkborg clone that has been licensed through the third party community kind of program with Morkborg. So something I'll also point out is I am not really a fan of the art punk movement. And there are two main reasons behind that. Number one is that I have found not necessarily Morkborg itself, but a lot of the third party content that has come out for Morkborg and Cyborg and other Borg role playing games is really lackluster. That there seems to be more effort towards the artwork and the presentation and far less focus on actually providing a good adventure or an entertaining supplement. So that's one of the things I haven't liked about much of the art punk movement. Also, and this was something that I really didn't care for with Morkborg itself, 
is a lot of times with the art punk releases, it's very difficult to comprehend the text on the page, which drives me crazy. That is not the case with Pirate Board. I never had any problem trying to comprehend what I was reading because it was getting lost in the artwork or the graphic presentation. Speaking of the presentation, really, really like this a lot. And I really like the artwork too. Uh, the artwork has kind of a Darkest Dungeon vibe to a lot of it, which of course I'm a huge fan of both Darkest Dungeon and Darkest Dungeon 2. So as far as a, a rule system here, very, very easy. This is a D20 roll higher than a difficulty rating in order to succeed. And you will have either positive or negative modifiers to your roll based on your attributes. So rolling up a character, creating a character in Pirate Borg, if you go through all the various different random tables and so forth, probably take you maybe 10, 15 minutes to do so. If you just go for getting the attributes and the gear, you're done in like five minutes, which is probably a good thing because combat is very deadly and your characters are very squishy. So you're going to actually get to your attributes in the traditional style. You're gonna roll three six-sided dice, total them up, but you're not gonna have attribute scores in a three to 18 range. You're just gonna use those numbers to get your modifier, because all that matters is the modifier. So when you're rolling up your character, you're looking at anywhere from negative three to positive three. So as far as the game rules themselves, you can never have a negative modifier higher than minus three. And you can never have a positive modifier higher than plus six. So important to keep that in mind. So as far as the difficulty ratings, you're looking at something that's normal difficulty is a 12. So roll 12 or higher to succeed. Of course, you're going to be using the whole gamut of polyhedral role-playing dice. So it's not only 20-sided dice. You'll be rolling your D8s, D4s, D100s, and so forth. So we have six character classes, and then we also have a couple of extra optional character classes. And if you want, you can randomly roll a, D a D6 in order to come up with your character class as well. You can create a completely random character for Pirate Borg and actually come across with something that's pretty interesting. So we have the Brute, which is kind of our masher. We've got the Rapscallion, <laughs> the Buccaneer, the Swashbuckler. We've got our version of the Cleric, the Zealot. And then we've got our Magic User, the Sorcerer. Now, as far as our optional classes, we do have the Haunted Soul. Because keep in mind, this is a horror pirate fantasy role-playing game. And then we also have Tall Tales, which gives you the opportunity to play a non-human sort of character. So if you, you could play as merfolk or an aquatic mutant, a sentient animal if you want. Very, very cool, like that quite a lot. So we're gonna have some various random tables to get you your flaws and your gear and an important item that you might own. In fact, right there, thing of importance, you'll roll a D100 so you could have a conch shell or a small golden bell or a long scar on your face, a petrified egg, all different things. And these are really, really just interesting little tools for you to use to create not only unique characters, but also unique NPCs. So we're going to get a lot of these random tables. So like for like alchemy and mystical mishaps. 
So one aspect of Pirate Borg that I thought was very interesting is naval combat. So your ship is kind of a character in itself. You're going to have a like a character sheet for your ship and we'll have various different abilities and skills for that ship. And with naval combat, it's almost got kind of a, a miniatures game vibe to it. And of course, as far as your seafaring goes, when you're not in naval combat, you're, you're kind of looking at like a big picture. But then if you do enter naval combat, then you're kind of zooming in on the action and what everybody is doing and, and what their job is on the ship. But there's even rules for wind, which is, as far as like Age of Sail miniatures games, something very important. So we're going to get our stat blocks for the various different ships. As you can see, the artwork throughout, really, really well done. And like I said, it's not over the top, like a lot of this art punk style tends to be. So then we're going to have uh, a bestiary as well with a variety of fantasy and horror creatures. So we've got different kinds of skeletons. We've got deep ones. We've got Davy Jones. So all of that is here. If you're a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean films, Pirate Borg is built for you. It really, really is. And one aspect of this book that really comes through throughout all of it is really one word, fun. The player characters that you create are going to be interesting and fun. The adventures, the treasure maps, the islands, the random islands that you can create with all the tools in this book are a lot of fun. The adventure that's included comes across as being a lot of fun. There is loads and loads of content packed into this book, keeping in mind that with the graphic style of this, you're not looking at all of your page space being taken up by text. You've got a lot of artwork throughout, but you also have all of these different tools available to you and I'll also point out, if you are interested in a, a pirate role-playing game or pirate horror, pirate fantasy, what have you, and maybe you don't want to use the actual rule system from Mork Borg that's adapted to Pirate Borg, you can certainly use all the other tools in this book to create your world, to create your adventures, to create your NPCs, and not necessarily have to use the rules light system that's included with this. Now, one of the things I was really impressed by is the adventure. The introductory adventure that's included with this is nearly 40 pages long, The Curse of Skeleton Point. And unlike most introductory adventures you find in role-playing core books, there is a lot of adventuring that's gonna be done with the Curse of Skeleton Point. This is not some one or two session scenario to introduce you to the rules of the game. There is loads and loads going on. Really cool NPCs, very interesting locations. They are keyed. So you've got a little bit of dungeon crawling, which, you know, they're not really dungeons, but still, you know what I mean. And this is really a sandbox, almost along the lines of a hex crawl. But just taking a peek, these are some of the locations that you've got all these things going on. Shrine of the Nameless Skull. Love the maps as well that are set up for this. I'm blown away. I really am blown away just by the adventure alone because this is not on rails. Your player characters can kind of go where they want, do what they want. And I love that. Of course, that is also part of the old school vibe in role-playing games. So that's how we're going to pretty much wrap up 
the book is with the adventure. And then we'll have a creature index. We've got an index. There is no table of contents in the front of the book. So it's important that you know the index is there in the back. So we also have all of our important charts and tables on the back cover, as well as the front cover. So right there, easily at hand for the game master. So that is Pirate Borg. Let's swing on over to the other camera. I'm gonna share some final thoughts and give this a review score. So I think it probably comes across, I really dig Pirate Borg. I was pleasantly surprised. Now, I have enjoyed Merc Borg. I liked Cyborg better, but out of the three main Borg games that Free League Publishing has released, this is numero uno in my book. It is jam-packed with loads of tools to create, once again, cool, interesting player characters, interesting NPCs, treasure maps, random islands. You've got a lot of different ship types to throw at your player characters and their ship. The best year is cool. The even though even the like optional character classes are pretty unique. I mean, you could play a jaguar, right? A sentient jaguar. What other game do you run across that in? And of course, to top it off, an excellent adventure that's going to have hours and hours of gaming built into it. Really, really impressed. So on a scale of zero to 10, get ready. Hold on to your hats. I give Pirate Borg a 10 out of 10. It is that good. If you are into pirates whatsoever and you want to bring that to your role-playing game table, you must own Pirate Borg, no doubt about it. All right, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be giving away a copy of Pirate Borg in hardcover, not PDF, in hardcover. And I will actually ship it anywhere I can legally ship from the US. So keep that in mind. So I know I've got folks who watch, they're in Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, the Amazon. If I can legally ship a copy of this, I will. So get into the running and super easy to be part of the contest. Three parts, right? Number one, gotta be a subscriber to the channel. You cannot enter the contest and not be a subscriber to the channel. I know, I mean that way. Also, hopefully you thumb up the video. I can't tell if you do or not, but please do. And then third, tell me who is your favorite historical or fictional pirate and why? So you can't just say Captain Jack Sparrow and that be your comment. Now you could say Captain Jack Sparrow because he reminds you of your drunken uncle. That's okay. That I will accept as a comment. And then on my live show, September 14th, I will reveal the winner of Pirate Borg and I will make sure that it is in your hands on release day, well, okay, I take that back. If it's, if it's traveling thousands upon thousands of miles, I probably can't guarantee it'll be in your hands on the 19th of September, but I will do my best. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that bell because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube. Of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more won't find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. 
Thank you very much for watching the video. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Thank you.